Hello and welcome to the very, very overdue round 24 2011 edition of NRL Rewind. I am Phil Whitehead. Got a lot to get through this week, uh, debuting a new segment called The Spectrum. And also I'm going to have a few predictions in line for the 2011 Dally M Awards. But as always, let's get it straight into it with the round 24 weekly wrap. Round 24 began with probably the most anticipated game of the round as the Melbourne Storm hosted the sliding St George Illawarra Dragons at Amy Park on Friday night. Both sides were without key players as Cooper Cronk, Mark Gaznia and Brett Morris all sat this one out. Defence dominated the contest and there were no points scored in the second half as Melbourne lacked cohesion and direction in attack without Cronk and the Dragons clearly resembled a team that is unsure of where its next win is coming from. While the defending premiers look a shell of their former selves, it was Melbourne's performance that clearly showed just how vital a healthy Cooper Cronk is to the Storm's finals hopes in September. The South Sydney Rabbitohs continue to dream of a place in the 2011 finals after yet another heart-stopping comeback victory, this time over the North Queensland Cowboys. Many, including myself, thought this match would be the end of the Bunnies' season and the late withdrawals of Greg Inglis and Nathan Merritt looked too much to overcome against a Cowboys side with hopes of finishing in the top four. However, down by 12 points with 9 minutes remaining, Souths surged and Chris Sando's intercept and sideline conversion would send the game into Golden Point, where it would be Sando again, winning the game with a penalty goal after a high tackle by James Seguiaro on Isaac Luke. Say what you will about the dive from Luke, but the penalty was there and the Rabbitohs are closer than ever to stealing a spot in the finals. On the Gold Coast, the Titans have moved out of last position with two rounds to go, with a win over a dreadful Canberra Raiders side that are now almost certainly this season's biggest disappointment. Canberra were unlucky in a sense, with a try to Titans forward Will Matthews appearing to come after some mid-air interference to Blake Ferguson. However, the Raiders have only themselves to blame after only playing close to their best football for 15 minutes of this contest. When Wade Graham slotted a field goal in the 72nd minute to give the Sharks a 25-18 lead over the Roosters, it appeared as though it would be enough to avoid a sixth straight loss. The Roosters had other ideas though and piled on three unanswered tries to close out a 36-25 victory. Despite ten tries in the match, the major talking point would be Cronulla coach Shane Flanagan and captain Paul Gallen's epic post-match whinge after Roosters forward Jared Warrior Hargraves hit Gallen with an ugly swinging arm which left him still bleeding at the press conference. If they weren't happy that he wasn't sent off, imagine how they would have reacted to, at the penalty being only one match. Obviously the match review committee were looking at another tape to the rest of us. The New Zealand Warriors have moved into the top four with a win over the Panthers in Penrith. Warriors half and fullback duo Sean Johnson and Kevin Locke were absolutely superb with Locke scoring one try and saving another with brilliant cover defence on an unlucky Trent Waterhouse, who could have started the match with two tries. The Kiwis will be terribly hard to stop in week one of the finals if they manage to hold on to their current position, and they could take a big step in that direction while also pushing the Dragons toward an eighth place finish when those two teams match up in round 25. Manly had their work cut out for them against a revitalised Bulldog side who knew they had to win all their remaining matches to stand a reasonable chance of making the finals. The Dogs hadn't lost all season when leading at half-time and took a 10-7 lead to the break thanks to a Jonathan Wright intercept in the 40th minute, which came after Manly had withstood Kieran Foran being sent to the sin bin for tackling David Stagg without the ball. The Bulldogs played their best match for a number of weeks, but some inspiring play from captain Jamie Lyon, man of the match Glenn Stewart, and rookie of the year favourite Daly Cherry Evans saw the locals home as the weather closed in. The Sea Eagles only have to win one more match at Brookvale to complete an undefeated season at home. Fittingly for the team in second position on the ladder, that match will be this Friday night against the Melbourne Storm. Parramatta's season hit a new low, as did their position on the ladder, as they were crushed by the West Tigers. The Eels went into the match boasting a good record against the Tigers, but it was recent form that showed through, with Wests largely coasting to their sixth straight victory, and handing the Eels their sixth straight loss, drawing level on competition points with the fourth place Warriors in the process. Blake Ashford did his chances of collecting centre of the year no harm with two tries, and Benji Marshall continued his good form. On the other side of things, the positional future of Jared Hayne looks as uncertain as ever after another below-average display at 5.8.
There were plenty of nerves coming out of Brisbane as Broncos fans considered that their side, all but assured of a top four finish, might be found wanting for motivation against a Newcastle side keen to keep the charging Rabbitohs at a distance. They needn't have worried though. The Queenslanders were just too classy against a brave Knights outfit that were forced to play briefly with 12 men after Chris Houston was sin-binned for tackling Jack Reed without the ball. Jural Yao Yi's late inclusion proved invaluable when he swooped on a stray Kurt Gidley offload and raced 90 metres to score the try that broke Newcastle's resolve. Brisbane have now won six of their last seven games and are in arguably the best form of any side in the competition, but a hamstring injury to Justin Hodges has soured the win, with the representative centre out for at least the rest of the regular season. And that leaves the ladder looking like this after round 24, with Melbourne now all but assured of the minor premiership, and the Newcastle Knights still hanging on to 8th position ahead of the Rabbitohs and the Bulldogs. Remarkably, even though the Bulldogs lost this week, they still have a less than likely chance of making the top 8 if they were to win their last two games and have the Knights and Rabbitohs lose their matches in round 25 and draw with each other in round 26. It also seems like a three-way dogfight to the finish for the wooden spoon between the Raiders, the Titans and the currently last placed Parramatta Eels. It's time for a new segment this week. Um, just a little way to quickly highlight the best and worst performance of the round. And for round 24, my performance of the week goes to West Tigers centre Blake Ashford for his two-try performance against the Parramatta Eels. Um, you might say that his job was made easier by matching up with uh, Justin Horro, who was a, a back rower, filling in in the centres, and uh, Jared Hayne, who just isn't a 5 8 um, He must have looked at that and thought, well, here, I'm going to have a good day. He certainly made the most of it. He scored two tries. He looked fantastic all day, and he made the opposition look completely second-rate. So um, I think that one was a fairly easy decision. Up the other end of the spectrum, the worst performance of the week goes to the Canterbury Bulldogs and more specifically the defenders that decided they heard their own whistle and let Steve Matai go from a tackle and allowed him to run upfield and score a try. Now for me, I loved seeing this, being a Manly fan, but I don't understand why a first grade footballer with as much experience as Andrew Ryan doesn't play the whistle. I mean, it was a very, very embarrassing moment for, for the Bulldogs, and given that they were right in that contest at the point that this happened, it really it was a game-changing moment and one that I think could potentially cost the Bulldogs any chance of sneaking into the finals. A very quick rant this week. One of the reasons I don't care for soccer as a sport is because of the play acting that goes on and the lengths that players will go to to try and win penalties. On Friday night, we saw a, a clear example of what was a dive by South Sydney's Isaac Luke. Yes, he was hit high. Yes, the penalty was technically there to be given. I just thought that the, the acting involved in Luke going to ground was entirely unnecessary. One, because the penalty had every right to be given in the first place, and two, because it really has no place. That kind of play acting has no place in rugby league and no place in the NRL. And I hope that if it becomes too much of a trend in the years to come that referees start penalising players who do deliberately act as a means to win a penalty. After a couple of rough weeks, the fearless prediction got back on the winning side of things last week and I'm looking to continue that as I look towards the 2011 Dally M Awards night. Now, I expect, first and foremost, Cameron Smith from the Melbourne Storm to win everything that he's nominated for, including the Daly M Player of the Year Award. Um, Daly Cherry Evans from the Sea Eagles should get the Rookie of the Year Award, just ahead of Jack Reed and Tariq Sims. Um, Daly has to be also considered a, a smoky for the halfback of the year, but I think that'll go to Jonathan Thurston. In other awards, I've got Blake Ageford winning the centre of the year just ahead of Matt Cooper mainly because of the good form he's been in in the second half of the season. The big one I want to highlight here is the 5 8 of the year. If Kieran Foran doesn't win the 5 8 of the year award I will be absolutely stunned. I know Benji Marshall's finishing with a wet sail but Kieran Foran over the course of this season has just had an amazing year. 
And that's going to wrap it up for this round 24 edition of NRL Rewind. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this YouTube account. Also, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I'll see you next week for all the round 25 action, and I'll see those of you going to Brookvale Oval for the blockbuster between Manly and the Melbourne Storm on Friday night.